Uh, myth number two that is really pervasive is banning firearms in public college and university campuses is justified because it only infringes on an individual Second Amendment right in a relatively safe campus environment. Um, this is absolutely false. Uh, an absolute firearm ban on public college and university campuses has far-reaching implications on the students and uh, employees' ability to possess a firearm. Uh, take, for instance, Boise State, which is a, a commuter college. Uh, while they may ensure that, say that they ensure a safe environment on the campus, individuals driving from Nampa or Meridian would be, in effect, prohibited from possessing a firearm the entire duration of their commute because they have nowhere to keep it on campus. They can't keep it locked in their vehicle. So it, it is a, it's a broad infringement on constitutional rights. Myth number three, and this has been one that's been, uh, I guess, expounded in many newspapers. The bullets will be zinging around and because of the beer culture, you know, we can't trust our 18 to 25 year olds to behave responsibly and, uh, you know, this is not a conducive environment for the possession of firearms. Uh, first of all, I consider this a very offensive characterization as, um, as I'm not too far out of that age group that is usually cited on this and uh, when I proposed, when I married my wife, she was actually 24. So the fact that, you know, you're, you know, you're calling people of that age group enough to make you know, grown-up decisions, I find particularly offensive. Second, um, a large majority of the drinking and partying takes place off campus, where it's already legal to possess a firearm. Um, in case, you know, many of you probably aren't aware, but roughly 85 to 90 percent of individuals who uh, attend the public colleges and universities in the state of Idaho live off campus. Uh, a very significant majority of those individuals are um, are over the age of tw are under the age of 21 as they are generally freshmen and sophomores. There aren't, to my knowledge, any bars or reason to come onto campus to drink. So I mean, it, it tends to lead to the argument that a large majority of the alcohol that's consumed on campus, and a large majority of uh, in any in off campus, anyone over the age of 18 may lawfully possess a firearm. So in using that, you don't see, you do see tragedies occur off campus associated with drinking, but the demographics of them being college students aren't any higher than any other demographic. Um, the third point is six states, Utah, Oregon, Kansas, Mississippi, and Wisconsin, currently by law permit qualifying individuals to possess a firearm on public college and university campuses to varying extents. I uh, believe if any of y'all read the Idaho Statesman, even though uh, Oregon Appellate Court came down with decision that prohibited these universities from enacting uh, regulations, complete bans on firearms on campus. Um, they turned into a contract contractual relationship and currently concealed carry holders may traverse campus uh, legally, lawfully, and without fear of repercussion on Oregon campuses if they're not affiliated with the university. Um, since becoming legal in these states, a lawfully possessed firearm has not been used to commit a murder on campus. I think that's a very telling argument. Some of these states, such as Utah, have, uh, have had policy enacted for, for a significant amount of time. Um, this next one is a graph. And basically what it does, and obviously uh, there are going to be many variables within this when you're doing anything. So this isn't intended to show uh, a disparity that is definitively making colleges safer, allowing possession of firearms on campus. What's it intended to show? is that it doesn't make it any less safe, um, at least based on, based on the statistical numbers. Uh, the purple bar, I believe that's purple, uh, shows the violent crime rate on Utah, the three largest Utah universities per 100,000 individuals between the uh, period between 2003 and 2006. During a significant portion of that period, the University of Utah was actively engaged in litigation fighting um, the legislature uh, law that basically prohibits them from infringing on a concealed carry holder's right to possess a firearm on campus. Uh, following 2007, the universities were forced to uh, allow concealed firearms on campus if you had a permit where over the age of 21, and actually in a very expansive area, so they allowed them in dormitories as well. And you don't see the violent crime race increase as, um, as that myth would occur. It must be noted that uh, some of you might see that there was actually one uh, murder and uh, uh, that occurred in 2007, so within this thing, that actually occurred, I don't know if some of you remember, but a white supremacist was taken to the Utah, uh, University of Utah Hospital, the prison uh, portion, and basically beat up his uh, correction officer and took his gun and shot him with it. So it wasn't committed by a student and wasn't a lawfully possessed firearm. 
Um, myth number four that you know you're seeing a lot is that police won't be able to discern between an armed shooter wreaking havoc on innocent students and those people who have drawn their weapon in defense. Well, the first thing I want to point out is training, training, training. Uh, the enhanced carry license has a legal requirement and a training requirement. Um, I believe that you know if this were to pass, it would be incumbent upon these structures to train people of what you're supposed to do when law enforcement comes into an area and this situation is happening. You drop your gun and put your hands in the air. If you know the bad guy's not going to do that. If he does, then the situation resolved anyway. Um, the second contention I would make with regard to this myth is would proponents uh, of this argument rather no one have a firearm to defend themselves in this situation? An active shooter, such as we saw in Virginia Tech, he had nine minutes in which he had locked the uh, door at the engineering hall and wreaked havoc on individuals. Not a single individual, because it was a gun-free campus, had the ability to defend themselves. Were we saying that we would rather no one be armed than someone be armed? Uh, the third point of contention is the fact that this could happen anywhere under current Idaho law. You're in a parking lot, you're in a public park, and something like this happens, it's already legal to possess concealed carry firearms, and uh, cops would run into this exact same situation. Uh, the fifth myth is, was widely uh, perpetrated or perpetuated by the president of Boise State University. Uh, he sent out an email to all faculty members, students, and, uh, and some parents and said, we can find no recorded incident in which a victim or spectator of a violent crime on campus has prevented a crime by brandishing a weapon. Well, just, <laughs> just uh, five days before he sent this email out, um, USA Today as you can see, reported that there was a shooting on Florida College campus and that it may have been self-defense. The gunman was being beaten, actually, walking from his uh, campus building to the parking lot by two individuals with a pull cue, retreated to his car, was pursued, and uh, ended up shooting one of his attackers. Um, not only did the cops clear him of any, uh, any liability, uh, saying that it was valid use of self-defense, but the president of Eastern Florida, uh, Eastern Florida State College contacted the student four days after this happened on the following Monday and invited him back to school and said that the college is in the process of changing its firearm policies to permit the possession of firearms in uh, cars on parking lots. Um, you know, I would like to end, conclude this presentation with a, a fairly famous quote. It, was, uh, it came out of the Tinker decision, which was a 1969 decision. And um, it was delivered by Associate Justice uh, Abe Fortas. And he said, and this, I mean, it's famous for anybody who's taken first year law, uh, law school, but it can hardly be argued that either students or teachers shed their constitutional rights to freedom of, of speech or expression at the schoolhouse gate. Well, I believe that if you're going to apply that to the First Amendment, then it should apply to the Second Amendment as well. So I just ask that you all support Senate Bill 1254 and protect uh, law-abiding citizens' uh, ability, fundamental right to uh, self-defense, and their constitutional right to keep and bear arms. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Uh, any questions from the committee? Uh, Senator Stanton. Hello. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good morning. Good morning. I wanted a little clarification about in, out, in and out of buildings and parking lots on grounds. Yes, so, ma'am. Um, you mentioned that there's this thousand student or person limit yes, uh, within buildings, but not necessarily in parking lots. So um, it's okay within this bill, let's say, no matter what number of people gather on the lawns, because um, informal gatherings happen all the time on university lawns. Yes, so it wouldn't matter what number would gather, um, they would all be able to carry, or is that thousand uh, enforced at that point? So the building requirement was implemented to ensure that, um, that it only applies to a structural confines area. And the inter public entertainment facility incorporates that within the definitions and the statute and fairly clearly lays out that this is only intended to apply to an area that is within a structural area that's uh, intended for the purpose of entertainment or sporting facilities. The primary motivation behind this was uh, an acknowledgement of the, this committee's concern with 222 that um, possession of firearms in these facilities might have uh, adverse effects on the university's ability to host certain events, such as NCAA sanctioned events and um, you know, certain concert venues. Uh, you know, one common you know, argument against that is, first of all, when you sell a ticket, it's in fact 
a license, so it's a contractual relationship. So if you put on the back of a ticket, you know, no firearms shall be allowed, then you're contractually bound to that. But we wanted to just go ahead and clarify that. And uh, also the fact that most times when you walk into a football game, you know, my wife gets her purse checked. It's a reasonably safe environment anyway because they do provide security at these uh, regular intervals. And so that's what the primary intent was. So you're absolutely correct in saying that if there's gathering on the lawn and there's no structure with the, that is within, whether it be a fence or whatnot, then it wouldn't be subject to this restriction. Follow up. Just to follow up, just for clarification, so yes, regardless of the size of the crowd in the open area in the campus, there wouldn't be a requirement to um, check or monitor whether people are carrying weapons? No, ma'am. It would only apply to within a structural confine intended as an entertainment facility. Thank you. Thank you. Other questions? Senator Work. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. And I, I'm sorry, I forgot your name. It's Dakota. Like the state, North Dakota, South Dakota? Uh, Mr. Dakota? Oh, Mr. Moore. Mr. Moore. Yes, Thank sir. <laughs> Mm. And I appreciate that. Right. Um, uh, thank you for the presentation. I appreciate it. Well, thank you. Um, uh, I would ask, because you're, front, you're representing the NRA today, yes, I'm sir. assuming, what's NRA's ultimate goal here? What, uh, we're, we're doing this, and you're presenting on it, but what's your ultimate goal? And there's a very easy answer for that. I believe that this is the best legislation that uh, we could come up with with regard to this issue. Um, I like it. I think that it accomplishes uh, you know, a very broad goal of allowing individuals, responsible law-abiding individuals who have received training to possess a firearm on campus. So with regard to my ultimate goal, I don't foresee um, you know, this being the, you know, the so-called snowball heading down the mountain. Um, now, I can't give any guarantees because you know, that's, I think that would be uh, That'd be futile to do so, but um, I don't see this being that snowball. May follow I up? Go ahead. follow up? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'm sorry, Mr. Moore, are you representing your own sense or the sense of your organization? The sense of my organization. Okay. So we believe that this is the best legislation that, uh, that we could present in the state of Idaho, that we could help present in the state of Idaho. Senator so, Work? Oh, go ahead. So to clarify, the, the NRA does not have a policy that would lead or a plan or a desire to lead to complete allowance everywhere on college campuses, whether in Idaho or around the country, to allow everyone to be able to lawfully carry weapons. Mr. Moore. No, no, no sir, not at all. Not that I'm aware of. Um, you know, I can't speak to future, but as of right now, I'm not aware of any, any policy that we have that would uh, call for the extension of this beyond what it currently is. Mr. Chairman. Oh, go ahead. Um, well, I, I would point out that in 1999, your current president said that he can't imagine the desire to have or, or arming campuses at all. So I, I appreciate your sense of what's today, but we seem to have evolved in those 15 years. Um, I have had communications from individuals, Mr. Chairman and Mr. Moore, uh, that are pretty upset with this bill because they believe it's an infringement on their Second Amendment rights, and they're upset that uh, the NRA or this legislature would be contemplating uh, restrictions on the ability to, to uh, carry weapons wherever a person may want. Uh, so I guess I'm, I'm a little confused because we've got Second Amendment groups that are upset with this legislation, and yet we have the NRA seemingly taking the lead on this legislation here in Idaho. Is the, is the, does the NRA have a position that they support restrictions on Second Amendment rights? No, Mr. Moore. Um, <laughs> that might be a little bit unfair characterization. Um, the, all I can tell you is that uh, as the state representative, for legislative representative for the NRA in the state of Idaho, um, I believe in our organization is behind us on this, that this is the best legislation that we could, uh, that we could get in, um, in the state of Idaho, and that you know whether you agree with it or not, uh, I believe that will be a significant step forward uh, for the Second Amendment rights of uh, students, and namely students and employees in the state. Mr. Chairman, Go may I, I thank you very much. I appreciate the latitude. Um, I would note that you just said the best you can do in Idaho, which the implication is that you want to do better. But I'll I'll let that one go. <laughs> well, thank um, you. You had mentioned during your presentation about firearms being used in the commission of murders on college campuses. Yes, sir. 
Uh, and uh, we probably share the same view. Uh, our college campuses are generally speaking very safe. In fact, they're safer. College campuses are safer than the outside world is, you know, with or without firearms. But I've had a lot of people expressing concerns not about <coughs> murders. Suicide is another issue that we can certainly discuss because suicide probably is, is the bigger issue. But the other thing is intimidation. And, and that's, I don't know if that's something that can be adequately defined. You know, we have instructors that are teaching controversial subjects. We have uh, students that might take issue with <coughs> other students during controversial discussions. <coughs> we certainly have students that want to get better grades than a professor thinks that they deserve somehow. Uh, I can remember those days well myself. Uh, and so a lot of people have talked about the intimidation factor. Uh, and, and you don't necessarily need to show a weapon to intimidate through the, the act of actually carrying a weapon. So I didn't know if you had a comment about that. You mentioned murder, I appreciate that, but we're talking about an academic experience here. Yes, sir, and I understand that concern, and I would have two points um, to reply back to that. And I would also like to address the suicide issue, um, even though it involves very sensitive subject of mental health. Um, my first response would be uh, this, this type of intimidation or this type of pressure uh, isn't unique to college and university campuses, as, uh, as many people would imply. I mean, in the state of Idaho, there are a significant number of individuals who have concealed carry permits that have jobs that, um, <laughs> that involve a lot of stress. You know, most college, and this is a, an interesting subject and very esoteric subject to delve into is the stress levels. As I read, you know, recently that uh, high school students seem to be more stressed than their parents now due to this. But I would say that, you know, these, these issues don't change uh, between college and graduation. You're still going to have to worry about paying bills. You're still going to have to worry about whether it's a professor or a boss about pleasing someone and being upset with them. Yet, it's not common to see this have an effect on individuals in the real world. Um, I would also like to point out that Colorado and Utah uh, present very good models for this. And, uh, and you don't see that type of intimidation, at least that, that I've seen. And uh, in most campuses, they do track those type of issues as assault. So it would, be, it would be fall under, when I showed that Utah graph, assault would have probably followed, fallen under that. And uh, you didn't see any significant uh, rises. Now, I understand that not all of those intimidations may be reported. And so, but that's the best explanation I can give you. Um, on the, with regard to the suicide issue, uh, I mean, it's a tragic issue that involves, you know, a certain degree of mental health, but I would submit that a campus ban on a firearm isn't going to deter someone from possessing a firearm on a campus that's intent on taking their own life.